everyone, I'm Alessia. I work in a cognitive neuroscience lab in France. It's my second year of a PhD program and today I'll discuss my favorite topic ever, goals. Stay with me if you're interested in what I was able to achieve during my first year. I wrote this list a year ago, in October 2022, when I started my PhD. And here I want to share openly about what I achieved and what I didn't, because this is life. I mean, everything changes. It's okay to have goals that are not completed, just because having goals is better than not having them at all. In fact, I have a notion page with my goals. So I'm going to start with more general goals, like goals for the whole period of a PhD that are actually shared with the supervisor. And then I'll go through more personal ones. And I also created something like a roadmap, so more detailed itinerary of how I go from point A of not having this done to point B having this done. If you're interested in that, I have a video on goal setting, so please go check it out. To start with, I composed this to-do list of what I want to do in three years, or just just during my PhD, just because I know that it may be extended after all. So I want to find a job or a postdoc position. Obviously, I didn't start doing anything in that direction. However, I do have a spreadsheet with all the job opportunities and I include some opportunities for exchange, for research visits, internships, stays, also postdoc opportunities. So I guess I've done something in towards that direction. I want to have three first author papers submitted. I personally find this goal very ambitious just because with the project that I was given, it doesn't seem to be possible. First of all, we've submitted our master project as a paper. It was not accepted yet, it is under the revision, but that might be my first first author paper. My second first author paper is obviously the project that I'm working on now, so that's the Saxer project. And we actually realized that it could be split into two sub-projects. We propose a training, so the first paper could be comparing before and after the training tests, pre-test and post-test, whereas the second paper could compare dyslexic children with typical children before the training. So this would allow us to extend the project and to split it actually into papers. And the fourth potential direction that I've also been going to is a site project that I was also proposed to do with another lab here in Paris that has to deal with a speech perception in general. And we're starting with behavioral experiments first. For this project, I've faced the harsh reality of going through an ethical committee, especially at my institution, which is a medical institution. So they want the ethics to be done very carefully. So that project is a bit postponed because of this issue. And even though it is a side project for now, it can be developed into something a lot more profound that thus could create a fourth paper or fourth possibility of a paper for me. I do think that not all of those lines of research would succeed, so I am keeping this room for failure. The next goal is try teaching. Well, I've got very nice news that I haven't shared on the channel yet. I've started teaching. This is something like science communication for the last year bachelor students. And I found this opportunity kind of through an acquaintance of my supervisor. Anyways, that was a weird long story, but eventually they got back to me and they invited me. I'm teaching overall of six hours per week. And that's gonna be only for the first semester because I guess I have a limit of teaching hours. It will be exceeded with the first semester classes. I've done two sessions and I have to teach overall of 12. It's going amazing. I've got two very nice groups and I'm doing that in English, which is such a privilege here in France. This is a class provided by a language center, but for psychology students, they get to practice their communication in English. But then also I don't have to be an English teacher. I'm basically teaching them how to read articles, write abstracts, interpret figures. I think I'm gonna do a workshop on how to apply to student internships in research laboratories just because I am receiving so many applications that are so poorly written. And I think just a three hour workshop can completely change their approach and highlight the things that are usually required at those places. I am officially trying teaching. Not sure if I'm gonna do that anymore, but I might. The next goal was to organize a scientific event. Well, the funny thing is that I organized a conference 
I was unfortunately doing that remotely, meaning that we composed the program and we communicated with participants. I also have done a round of abstract reviews, which was my first reviewing experience and it was super nice, fruitful in terms of understanding how other people write and getting into the structure of the research proposal or an app. I haven't done anything else on that terms, but I think with my project I've got enough of organization and management, I'm okay with this goal at this stage. The next goal was to learn all steps of EG processing. This is a tricky part because I remember I went to a workshop in December, it taught me the basics of m &E Python. Even though I've done EG processing before during my bachelor's, I think here people have different approach, more serious. And I mean, it's okay. I was an undergrad student. Maybe also my supervisor didn't give me all the details and was not too strict with me. But after this workshop, I've got a feeling of being a bit lost. And even though I'm trying to go through the data with my supervisor and technician, and also I've been discussing things with my colleagues, it still feels like there's so much room for improvement. I'm trying to get to the point of smoother understanding of each parameter, but I think that can be done with practice. And I am happy to have people around me who can explain things to me. And also at some point, I'm gonna be honest, my supervisor told me that she's a bit worried about me not being too active in terms of data analysis and just not proposing solutions and not sharing my own script. I just decided to be proactive and I said, how about during our weekly meetings, we take like 10 to 20 minutes and I show you like a tiny task that I do every week so that I can learn something. And we've been doing that for the past month, a bit more actually. And so far I can see the progress. I'm now starting to feel a bit more confident when I'm sitting in front of my data. So that's a positive point, but there's still so much to do here. The next goal was to try to learn statistics up to a basic autonomous level. I've started a Coursera course. I've done a course on campus, which was not super productive. I've created several scripts myself for my site project. We're still at the level of pilots, but that doesn't prevent me from writing scripts. And also the statistics in the site project is way easier than in my main project. I think I kind of feel okay in terms of that, but, but that's totally true that I don't feel confident enough doing statistics overall. Anyways, the next goal is do a summer school internship conference in the North America. Obviously, I didn't do any of that. I also didn't do any summer schools this summer, just because I guess the timing was completely wrong. Next summer, I really want to do a summer school because I think it can shift your understanding of a subject drastically. The next goal was find out how grants work and apply to one with my project. I am extremely happy to announce that I won my first Young Researcher grant that was completely out of nowhere, that was distributed by our internal network at the Institute and I just seized the opportunity as the project was kind of ready. I asked for all the necessary recommendation letters, I assessed the budget, basically created a whole new proposal for my same main project. It turned out to be a nice bonus. So now I'm still not quite sure how I can use that money. I can definitely do conferences with that, but I'm not 100% sure if I can use it for other purposes. I've got some ideas in mind and I think eventually I'll share it here too. But just in the process, I don't want to disclose too many details, but I have some ideas True. Sure. Also, I applied to a conference grant and I got one and I talked about it in my previous video. It was a nice experience after all and I think I want to continue doing that too. Next goal was learn French to use it freely. So I've got to admit that I didn't go through this list for like last several months because I've been on vacation and working pretty hard before that. It just strikes me how advanced on every goal that's super nice. So that's re actually, this is one of the reasons why I set goals is just because having them 
allows me to actually get things done. Back to French and using it freely. I've passed my C1 test this May. I've got my results at the end of summer and I was extremely happy. It was not a very high note, but still I got it passed. I've got a conf an official confirmation now. I was taking three classes during the last semester. One intensive course, it was three hours a day for two weeks in the summer. And now I'm taking another course in this semester, but that's just gonna be two hours per week. I gave my first work presentation in French that was exactly for the early researcher grant ceremony. It went okay. Literally all of the people in the room were French. I guess it was such a tough atmosphere to present in, not super supportive, but I have to get more training presenting my work in French. I'm totally doing more during my second year of my PhD. And I've got to tell that I'm starting using French when I'm speaking with my interns, because for them it's easier and for me it's a good practice. And this is going super well too. I now feel a lot more confident speaking. Maybe one day I record a video in French, but that's gonna be another story. The last goal in this to-do list is exchange very poorly formulated but basically what I want to do is research stay in another laboratory abroad. I haven't quite planned that yet but maybe I can use some of the funding that I received as a part of the grant and maybe I can create a collaboration with one of the potential collaborators of my supervisors or maybe I can do like a completely different program related to the university something similar to Erasmus internship, but in a bit different format. I'm still considering options here. I've got several meetings regarding that with my supervisor, with the graduate office. I've written several emails, but I don't think I got a final answer yet. But it has to be during my second year for sure, because otherwise during the third year, I gotta be stressed. I just need to choose the right timing and organize it in a better way. So now I am going to give you an update of more specific things. I will just read a to-do point and tell you if that was done or not. Year one, literature is nicely organized by article in a catalog. Don't think it was done in a nice way, so no. Literature review is written in a draft form, but info is more or less accumulated. That is done. Proposal for a study is written, yes. Proposal for a study is presented at a lab meeting, yes. Got a response from an ethical committee, yes. Experiment one programmed, yes. Data collection is done for the first experiment, no. Data for the first experiment is analyzed, no. Statistics course basics, done, N yes. Coursera course done, no. Statistical modeling course done, no. Seminar prepared by me, yes. I actually was invited to a different university to give a talk about my master topics. I guess I could count that in as a seminar prepared by me. Intervention in someone else curriculum as a lecturer, no. One summer school abroad, no. One conference talk done, yes. One conference poster presentation, yes. Site project finalized? No, not at all. <laughs> Master project paper submitted? Yes. Master project paper out? No. One conference organized? Yes. One professional visit to Switzerland? No. Even though I actually visited Switzerland this year, but it was not for anything related to a professional setting. Uh, first author paper draft written with intro method and results described? Yes, that's a master's project paper. It took so much time to write it. Newsletter website, lab Twitter under my management. Nothing from that except for the website that I filled in for my project, but that's not what I meant by writing down that goal. I gave an interview to someone. Then I've done an TikTok interview about what I'm doing in the lab. It was also in French, but it was prepared science pop PhD related content on social media. Well, I guess my YouTube is functioning in that, in that way, so yes. That's been a long list. I think I'm gonna stop this video here. I'm honestly impressed. I didn't come here prepared 
and I'm very happy about how it is turning out. On a different note, something that I might want to improve in my PhD is the relationship within my team. I think we're a little bit working too autonomously and not having this bond that I think we had initially. But now we kind of lost that connection. I should add it to the next year goal because working environment can really contribute to your personal and professional efficiency. So I think that's something that I should work on. That's it for today's video. I hope you had some ideas of what you can plan for your academic year ahead. I hope next year I will be able to do the same kind of evaluation of my goals. And if you want to follow that progress of my PhD or academic journey, please don't forget to subscribe. And since you're here, I have a question for you. What would be one goal for your next academic year that you want to fulfill? Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video. Bye.